Hey, Shalom fam, this is Moore Dwayne. We're about to get started pretty soon with Midrash Israel. Um, I'm going to throw some music on real quick and uh, we'll go ahead and get started. I'll log in, dial in, and we will get this started. So until then, here we go. <laughs> I hear a lot of chitter chatter, so let's address the heart of the matter. I'ma say it with my chest. You left the church to join a cult without them black folks, but you know. I'ma say it with my chest. It's Yahushua, not Jesus, Passover, not East, but don't worry. I'ma say it with my chest. Sabbaths on Salad Day and celebrating feast days, but keep calm. I'ma say it with my chest. I'm an Israelite, I'm an Israelite. say it with your chest. I'm an Israelite, I'm an Israelite. I'ma say it with my chest. I'm an Israelite, I'm an Israelite. Go say it with your chest. I'm an Israelite, I'm an Israelite. I'ma say it with my chest. All oh, praise to the most high creator. Yeshua, his son, redeemer, savior. Ancestors Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob wrestled with the angel and prevailed. Now we got favor. Yeah. Found out I was Israel and what seemed like a fairy tale, now it is real. Couldn't put my finger on it nor see well. Now I feel everything that's written like it's braille. My optometrist said, to see different, I'ma see different. Was born nearsighted, couldn't see distant. Yeah. Felt my eye examined, repented. Came in contact with the truth, now your boy's rocking corrective lenses. Woo. I read what he said, I'm thinking, no he didn't. Now I can say what he said and there is no infringement. Uh -huh. I don't mean to shake your foundation, but we was Israelites. We were never Christians. Facts. I hear a lot of chitter chatter, so let's address the heart of the matter. I'ma say it with my chest. You left the church to join a cult without them black folks, but you know. I'ma say it with my chest. It's Yahushua, not Jesus, Passover, not East, but don't worry. I'ma say it with my chest. Sabbaths on Salad Day and celebrating feast days, but keep calm. I'ma say it with my chest. I'm an Israelite, I'm an Israelite. Go say it with your chest. I'm an Israelite, I'm an Israelite. I'ma say it with my chest. I'm an Israelite, I'm an Israelite. Go say it with your chest. I'm an Israelite, I'm an Israelite. I'ma say it with my chest. Say it loud. Yeah. Better simmer down, names all bro like I said it now Fourth tribe like I said it down Check out metal, this ain't horns and Gretel We don't meddle with them fairy tales But it's grim, them brothers love them fairy tales A lot of them because they love them fairy tales Flameless, with Sodom in your lenses Looking all delivered with your menses But you don't see us in the benzes With black goodies with gold chains and fringes A mob goodie through outcasts with kindreds Fam and your hoosh, mind your business Word. No, no love. love, we Israel, this Israel Savages. Make your kids feel Say Yahuwah is the best, I'm blessed Covered with Menzel, Johnny on the spot Call me Menzel I hear a lot of chitter chatter So let's address the heart of the matter I'ma say it with my chest You left the church to join a cult without them black folks But you know I'ma say it with my chest It's Yahushua, not Jesus, Passover, not East But don't worry, I'ma say it with my chest Sabbaths on Salad Day and celebrating feast days, but keep calm. I'ma say it with my chest. I'm an Israelite. I'm an Israelite. Go say it with your chest. I'm an Israelite. I'm an Israelite. I'ma say it with my chest. I'm an Israelite. I'm an Israelite. Go say it with your chest. I'm an Israelite. I'm an Israelite. I'ma say it with my chest. Revelation 2 and 9, your time is up. More tricks up your sleeve than Penn and Teller. What's true? Come out, brother, gig is up. Before we uncover mask the school, we do trust. Who Israel, your honor, I accept the call. Walked out the courtroom with a Kool-Aid smile. I'm not trying to boast or brag, but y'all never had a problem with our filthy rags. Too easy, the children of the light give praise. Judah, that's what the name means. Second Exodus, I'm on the first plane. Lamb's blood washed the sin away. More ray and ready. What you teaching today? We done took a couple L's, no weed to the face. Negro's been assassinated. NBA, dead bones like a red. We regenerate. Whoa. I'm an Israelite. I'm an Israelite. Go say it with your chest. I'm an Israelite. I'm an Israelite. I'm a say it with my chest. I'm an Israelite. I'm an Israelite. Go say it with your chest. I'm an Israelite, I'm an Israelite.
We gon' jump We gon' jump And I got part by nothing And I ain't ashamed to throw my hands up Yeah, yeah, we gon' jump It ain't real, it's a rule, I can't We gon' jump It ain't real, it's a rule, I can't pass It ain't real, it's a rule, I can't pass You're about to cry with your story. Don't be holding back your tears, don't be phony. People walking right past by you. Singing like we did in the fire. Praise y'all for the new day. Cause you wasn't taken out the way. Old man gone away. Let the new man manifest today. Say it again. Old man We're gone, gone away. This Let service is provided by freeconferencecall.com. Please enter your access code followed by the pound or hash sign. If you are the host, press star now. Otherwise, please wait and you will be joined into the conference. Like a set of cables, we jumping. Put it on a shoe, now we jumping. Like a game of double dutch, jumping. The host has not arrived yet. Please wait. We used to catch a stone to the face. Now a stone might cry in your place. Man. covered last week was a very powerful uh passage we covered uh first kings chapter 18 and um just as a quick recap for anyone who wasn't on uh last week uh basically what we saw we saw uh, um elijah and obadiah so obadiah was a righteous dude who actually was working as as uh as the king ahab's um basically top guy he was the palace administrator for king ahab but Obadiah was, was righteous. He was he was a keeper of the commandments. You know, he was a righteous dude who feared the Most High, is what the scriptures say. So, um, what Obadiah did was um, he um, what Obadiah did was he gave actually uh, uh, almost like a one of the Akim brought out like an underground railroad type of thing. He brought out uh, as as he protected the Israelites, the righteous Israelites, the righteous prophets from being killed by Ahab and Jezebel. He hid them and um, and fed them while they were in hiding. This is a, remember, this is the top advisor for Ahab. So, so that was a big risk that he did. He basically risked his life for the brethren. And so Elijah went up to Obadiah and was like, man, I need you to set me up with King Ahab. And so that's what he did. And the next thing you know, Elijah, uh, there's a big showdown, you know, Elijah gets with King Ahab and is like, man, meet me at Mount, Mount Carmel, you know, it, it's going down, basically. They met up at Mount, Car Mount Carmel, and um, so Mount Carmel was actually, uh, according to um, the Phoenicians, was like the home of Baal worship. That was like the the place they believed Baal dwelt. So, you know, Ahab probably thought they, they, had, they had the upper hand to go meet over there. You know, Elijah was very purposeful about it with the things he was saying. 
uh, made it to where it was pretty much no question. He made it to where Ahab was going to be quick to move and meet. Uh, and so that's what they did. And that's where you get the showdown between uh, Elijah and the prophets of Baal. And so we know the story, you know, uh, basically um, right at the time of the evening sacrifice for at first, what we saw was the Baal were the Baal prophets trying to, you know, trying to get the, their Elohim to come down and consume the, the sacrifices. Of course, nothing happened. Um, Elijah started talking to them, um, basically. And then what you saw was, it said, the scriptures say right at the time of the evening sacrifice, that's when Elijah comes through and is um, basically like uh, calling to the Most High, and the Most High rains, the fire comes from the Shamayim and consumes the sacrifice. That's just a quick, long story short. And um, right after that, they killed all the prophets of Baal. That's what happened. They killed the dude. Remember, these are Israelites, y'all. We're not talking about pagan people who are, um, you know, like Moabites or, or Edomites who are worshiping Baal or Sidonians. No, we are talking about Israelites. These prophets were Israelite people, prophets of Baal, who are worshiping Baal and uh, turning the nation um, to Baal worship. And so Elijah, after, uh, after the Most High showed himself and consumed the sacrifice, Elijah was like, yeah, y'all, y'all burned him up and, and killed him. And they took him down and they killed all of the prophets. It was about 850 people. Because it was 450 prophets to Baal. And I can't, it was 400. I can't remember what, what they called the other 400 people. But they were all into uh, the worship of the Elohim. Killed them. And so these were the people that sat at the table of Jezebel. These were Jezebel's people. You know, these were like Jezebel's um, prophets. But they were also, you can... You can imply that they, they had a relationship with Jezebel because they sat at her table to eat every day. And so with that being said, um, we're going to segue into this in chapter 19 from here and see how does Jezebel respond to that and how and what happens next. Um, I see um, Moray Duane is, is on as well. Shalom and blessings, Moray. Shalom and blessings, Aki. Y'all, um, this is also streaming live on the Bil Biblical Hebrew Israelite Awakening YouTube channel. If you all have not had the chance to um, to tune in to that YouTube channel, it's a very powerful channel. Um, he has 24-7 live uh, Israelite Hebrew um, um, information, media, videos, uh, Torah readings, scripture readings, etc. that goes on there 24-7 many times. And it's just a lot of good material on there. So uh, if y'all haven't had the chance to check it out, it's the Biblical Hebrew Israelite Awakening YouTube channel. Um, check it out. Uh, subscribe to it. Uh, I think uh, you, will, you all will like it. You all will enjoy that. So um, without further ado, um, let's go ahead and get it in. We'll open it up with prayer. Abba Yah. Elohim of our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I just want to take this time to say, Torah Rabbah Yahuwah, for everything that you do for us every day. Torah Rabbah Yahuwah, for Chaya, Ahava, Shalom. Torah Rabbah Yahuwah, for everything that you do for us, for, for your blessings, your grace, for your mercy. Torah Abba, that you're with us and that you'll never leave us nor forsaken us. You are told, you are glorious, Kadosh, 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 which means you are holy, 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 and there's no one like you. Mika, Mocha, who is like you? There's no one like you. You are the most high Elohim of the universe for whom all things are possible. You are sovereign. You rule. You reign. You are in control. You are Yahuwah Sava'oh, king of the universe, who's here with his people, Israel. We pray, Abiyah, that you bless your people, Israel, with favor. We pray for you that you shower us with your ruach, fill us with your presence as we study in these scriptures, as we study in this passage, Yahuwah. We pray that you show us everything that you want us to see today. And reveal to us everything that you want us to know. We pray that you give us eyes to see and ears to hear what you want to reveal to us through this passage tonight as we go on through these ancient books of our forefathers that many call the Bible or the scriptures. We thank you so much, Abiyam. We thank you so much for everything. We pray for all these things that come to pass according to the covenant. In the name of Hashem, Yehoshua, Hamashiach. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. May it be so. All right. So I'm going to recommend for everybody to read along. I'm starting with chapter 19, verse 1. 
uh, to get the best understanding, it's always it's, it's, it's a good idea to read along if possible. So I'm starting with verse one. And Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done. Also, how he had executed all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah, saying, So let the gods do to me, and more also, if I do not make your life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. And when he saw that, he arose and ran for his life and went to Beersheba, which belongs to Judah, and left his servant there. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a broom tree. And he prayed that he might die and said, it is enough. Now, Yahuwah, take my life, for I am no better than my father's. Then as he lay and slept under a broom tree, suddenly an angel touched him and said to him, Arise and eat. Then he looked, and there by his head was a cake baked on coals and a jar of water. So he ate and drank and lay down again. And the angel of Yahuwah came back the second time and touched him and said, Arise and eat, because the journey is too great for you. So he arose and ate and drank, and he went in the strength of that food forty days and forty nights, as far as Horeb, the mountain of Elohim. And there he went into a cave and spent the night in that place. And behold, the word of Yahuwah came to him, and he said to him, What are you doing here, Elijah? So he said, I have been very zealous for Yahuwah, Elohim of hosts, for the children of Israel have forsaken your covenant, tore down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they seek to take my life. Then he said, Go out and stand on the mountain before Yahuwah, and behold, Yahuwah passed by, and a great strong wind tore into the mountains and broke the rocks in pieces before Yahuwah. But Yahuwah was not in the wind, and after the wind, an earthquake, but Yahuwah was not in the earthquake, and after the earthquake, a fire, but Yahuwah was not in the fire, and after the fire, a still, small voice. Verse 13, so it was when Elijah heard it, that he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood in the entrance of the cave. Suddenly a voice came to him and said, what are you doing here, Elijah? And he said, I have been very zealous for Yahuwah Elohim of hosts, because the children of Israel have forsaken your covenant, torn down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they seek to take my life. Then Yahuwah said to him, go, return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. And when you arrive, anoint Hazael as king over Syria. Also, you shall anoint Jehu, the son of Nimshi, as king over Israel. And Elisha, the son of Shaphat, of Abel, Meholah, you shall anoint as prophet in your place. It shall be that whoever escapes the sword of Hazael, Jehu will kill. And whoever escapes the sword of Jehu, Elisha will kill. Yet I have reserved 7,000 in Israel, all whose knees have not bowed to Baal. In every mouth that has not kissed him. Verse 19. So he departed from there and found Elisha, the son of Shaphat, who was plowing with 12 yokes of oxen before him. And he was with the 12th. Then Elijah passed by him and threw his mantle on him. And he left the oxen and ran after Elijah and said, please let me kiss my father and my mother and then I will follow you. And he said to him, go back again. But what have I done to you? So Elisha turned back from him and took a yoke of oxen and slaughtered them and boiled their flesh using the oxen's equipment and gave it to the people and they ate. Then he arose and followed Elijah and became his servant. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Very, very powerful passage, y'all. Very, very powerful. So, okay. So, for so just y'all, this is how it works. So this is designed to be very interactive. This is a mirror. So um, this is if you, if there's no need to hold back. There's no need to feel any type of way about bringing forth what's on your heart. Whatever the Ruach has put on your heart to bring forth in this midrash, all you have to do is dial star six, and you'll be able to bring forth whatever um, the Ruach has put on your heart to bring forth. Now, um, even if you have questions, comments, 
Uh, whatever you would like to bring forth, all you have to do is dial star six. Now, when you dial star six, this will unmute you. Uh, once you are unmuted, uh, I will call on you. So um, if you're unmuted and I don't call on you right away, all that means is that there's someone that dialed star six before you. That's all that means. I do see you, though. Wait, sit tight, and I will call on you when it's your, when, when, when it's your turn. So, um, y'all, so with being said, I'm going to open up the floor. Uh, very powerful chapter. There's a lot of stuff in here. Uh, what are y'all thoughts? Just now, star six. Is there anything that stood up out uh, in this chapter to you, or anything you would like to bring forth? All right. So we have um, Art Carter. Shalom, shalom. Uh, shalom, Art. Uh, the first thing I noticed was um, I remember Art Yosef talking about how the eating and the drinking was actually eating of drinking of of the doctrine. So when Elijah left, he uh, he was met by the messenger who told him to rise up and eat. Uh, also, when he did that, he had to do that two times. And so just like the man in the wilderness, he was given food and instruction. We know he was given instruction because it says that he went out to the wilderness. He went to ask to die, but he ended up being instructed. He goes to Mount Horeb instead. When he gets there, you see the same thing. It repeats itself. He makes his petition to Yah. Yah makes himself known clearly to him. He makes the petition. And then you see Yah's wonder, the fire, the earthquake, and the wind. And the second time, it's not so clear. The second time, it's a still, small voice, which is very reminiscent of the covenant and the new covenant. First, he makes it so he revealed himself clearly to our forefathers. But then the second time, wow. people had to discern it. The second time, it was a prophet from Galilee, something that had to be discerned. You had to discern that door. So that's what I noticed about this chapter. After that, he goes off and he establishes an order. He establishes a king. He establishes a prophet. And then 7,000, 7,000 yeah. who hadn't been the knee. Um, and the king's yeah. name was Yahu. The prophet's name was Elisha. Yahu means he is. Elisha is El Salvation. Literally, if you take those names and put them together, you get Yah is Salvation, Yahushua. That's what I know. Man. That's all I got with it. That's good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. So, man, that was powerful. That was a good breakdown. Uh, I, I like how you brought that out. That makes sense. It definitely makes sense how he established his order um, and how that can be um, symbolic of the uh, of the first covenant made at Sinai versus um but what we what we would call the renewed covenant, which was more, you know, it's kind of like the still small voice. So uh, the first one being a lot more outright, a lot more in your face, and the second one being um, being there, but you have to understand it. Uh, it's not, it wasn't just in your face. So a great, great point, Aki. Uh, always good to hear from you. All right, um, we got a uh, uh, Cody Sharman. Shalom, shalom. Shalom. Um, I just have a question so that I can get a better understanding on um, 20, when it says El Elisha then left his oxen and ran after Elisha. Let me kiss my father and my mother goodbye. And he said, and then I will come with you. Go back, Elijah replied. What have I done to you? Can you give me understanding exactly, or can you speak it the way that he's saying? Because what is that, what have I done to you? I don't understand that, um, how he's saying it. You know what I mean? Um, what have I yeah. done to you? I, I don't understand how he's saying that. Can you kind of expound on that just for me so I can just get past that part, if you know what I mean? Sure, sure. Um, I was actually going to touch on that. Uh, I wanted to touch on that that, that literal uh, passage, por portion of the passage. So what, that's what I'll do. So I'm going to just read real quick what you're referring to. So Cody Starman is referring to verse 19 and 20. Uh, this is regarding Elisha. So verse 19, it says, So he departed from there and found Elisha, the son of Shaphat, who was plowing with 12 yoke of oxen before him. He was with the 12. Now, this is a, this is a big, big point right here. Um, number one, who has 12 yoke of ox, oxen? Remember that oxen is, uh, that's, that's considered, that's like, like having a tractor you know, back then. That that was a uh, very expensive uh uh equipment, for lack of a better way to explain it. And Ak had twelve oxen. So um this leads many to conclude that Elisha actually um came from some money. He actually had a lot he was probably a wealthy person, uh son of a wealthy landowner. Um so keep reading. So 
Elisha uh, was plowing 12, 12 oxen. Then verse 20, it says, and he left. Okay, then it says, then Elijah passed by him and threw his mantle on him. So the mantle was like a, uh, you know, it's like a, poor, a part of his garment that he threw on him. But it's, you know, we know what the mantle is symbolic of passing on his anointing too, though, passing on his, you know, his, uh, his, his, like his purpose, his anointing, um, his role, I guess you could say, onto Elisha. And it says in verse 20, after Elijah threw his mantle on him, Elisha left the oxen and ran after Elijah and said, please let me kiss my father and my mother. Then I will follow you. And he said to him, go back again. For what have I done to you? So what I'm getting out of this is that um, Elisha is, is saying, can I go back to my parents? Elijah, from what from my understanding, is saying, uh, is saying to go, go do that. But what we see is that what Elisha did, when you keep reading, is he killed the oxen. Y'all, again, oxen, is, a, is that's something that's very, very expensive. Only, only the wealthy people had that many oxen back in those days. But he killed, he killed um, a yoke of oxen, and what did he do? It says he gave it to the people. Now, y'all, y'all think about this and, and, and compare this to the, to the um, encounter that Hamashiach Yehoshua had with what they, who they called a rich young ruler. Uh, when he had the encounter with the rich young ruler, remember the uh, encounter, he said, um, you know, what do I need to do to, 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 to have eternal life? I don't have to, I'm, no, I'm, not, I'm paraphrasing, but I know many of y'all know this verse because this was repeated all the time in the church, right? Um, he said, what do I need, what do I have to do in order to attain eternal life? And Yeshua brought out basically the Ten Commandments. The rich young ruler said, I already do all that. What did Hamashiach say to do, y'all? Yeshua said, give up all your wealth, basically, and give it to the poor. Sell all your wealth and give it to the poor and come and follow me. And the rich young ruler could not do that. Now, look at that contrast and then compare it to what happened to Elisha. Elisha gave up all his wealth, and, and it says that he gave it to the people. You can, you know, you can basically uh, imply that he gave it to, to those in need or gave it to you know, it says like there's some commentary that say his relatives and friends, whatever. He gave it away, though, and was ready to follow Elijah. He was ready to give it all for this truth. And I know many of us can can probably relate to that. I know a lot of us who gave up a lot for this truth. I know several of y'all on the um, on the call personally uh, who gave up a lot for this truth. Some of y'all gave up opportunities to become rich for this truth. So. I just thought that was a very powerful story. Um, did that answer your question, Charmin? Actually, uh, yeah, I'm good. I'm good. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah, no problem. And if anybody else mm -hmm. has um, anything they want to, well, go ahead. No, I was done. I was done. Thank you. Okay, sounds good, Cody. Always good to hear from you. Always good to hear from you. And, and if anybody else has anything they would like to touch on that or, or they want to uh, answer that as well, all you have to do is dial star six. Uh, but she was just asking about verse 20 and the best way and, you know, best way to look at that. So the floor is open. What else do y'all see on here? Um, what about what about Elijah uh, running, running from Jezebel uh, and, and Ahab? After all those things, have, have any of y'all thought about that? Now, remember the last chapter, we just saw Elijah basically have the greatest victory. One of the greatest victories in the, that you can arguably say in the scriptures is when he had the showdown with the prophets of Baal. It was just him against 800 people, and he had, had no fear. Man, he had, it's, it was like he didn't care. He had no fear and had the showdown. The Most High showed up, and then not only that, he, he was able to rally up the people to kill off all the, all the prophets of Baal. It was a it was a huge victory he had, and and it seems like right after that was the was the was a test. It seems like after every major victory, um, you know, a test comes, and it's and he uh, and it caused him to it caused him to run all the way to Judah. Now it says that he ran. Now remember, he was in the northern kingdom, and he ran all the way to Beersheba. Now, when we Beersheba is not not only is Beersheba in Judah, but it's it's in the southern. It's like in the southern one of the most. It's like the southernmost point of Judah. So he went far, far away, uh, and it just it just shows his uh, 
his fear. What are y'all thoughts on this? We got um, a couple of callers. I have area code 317. I think that's my Akiosa. Shalom, shalom. All right, go ahead. Hey, shalom, shalom. Yeah, man, this is a, a good chapter. There's a lot of weighty matters in here. Um, I like that point you just brought out about him uh, leaving. And so it's interesting because I think it's in um, chapter 17 where we first get up introduced to Eliyahu and we see that from the beginning he had to kind of take on um a great deal of faith to operate in this function. He had to trust the most high to provide for him in the midst of famine. Yeah. He had to go before kings, um, and then, you know, he even had to redeem a, a widow and uh bring her son back to life. And then he had to go before the king again and go before the prophets of Baal, and he had to slaughter some folks. He had to do a lot of things. Yeah. And so yeah. at this point, I think he's like, okay, surely I'm done. And so I think with the Most High, sometimes we put limitations on the work that he has for us to do. And that's what I kind of, that's how I've always looked at this narrative where he, he runs and he's like, all right, I don't know how much else I can get away with. I know that I didn't survive, you know, through the drought. I didn't uh, survive some wow. stuff, but I can't get away with too much more. And now they, you know, I'm the last one out here, and, you know, I don't, I don't know what to do. But then it says that, um, it says he went on a day's journey into the wilderness, he came and sat down under the juniper tree, and he requested for himself that he might die because he was ready. He was like, surely I'm done. And he said, it is enough now. Oh, Yahuwah, take away my life, for I am not better than my father's. He's like, I've done more than even my father's have done. And he says, yeah. and it, it says, as he lay and slept under the juniper tree, behold, then the Malachim touched him and said to him, arise and eat. Isn't that what he said to, um, to, to, uh, to Kiefer? Arise, yep. kill and eat. There's an inheritance yep. for you after your work is done. Now you have to go forward and, and judge good and evil. Now that you've proven yourself, same thing with Noah. When he came off the boat, he was given all the beasts of the fields and the birds of the air because he was proven that he can accept the word of Elohim and he can judge good and evil. And But yet there was still more work, more life for him to live. So then it says, arise and eat. And he looked and behold, there was a cake baking on coals and a cruise of water at his head, and he did eat and drink and laid him down again. And then the angel or the Malach Yahuwah came, <clears throat> came again a second time and touched him and said, Arise and eat. Again, rise again and eat, because the journey is too great for you. So Yahuwah recognizes that you don't have it in yourself to complete all the works that he has. So for us to try to put limitations on the work that you have for us to do, is out of order because it's not by yeah. our, our own strength that we do any of this. So we see that Yahuwah will provide you the sustenance that you need to continue. So it says that, um, he said, because the journey is too great for you. And he arose and he eat, he did eat and drink and he went in the strength of that meal for now 40 days and 40 nights. So mm -hmm. doesn't that sound like Yahusha? 40 days, 40 nights fasting. It says he doesn't eat anything else after that meal for 40 yep. days, 40 nights. That's Moshe going up on the mountain, 40 days, 40 nights. Mm. So now there's still an even greater work for him to do. And then there's even an appointed time for him to show up for a meeting with Yahuwah. Now he has to take all that he's learned and, and use it because he's about to deal with Yahuwah face to face. Because he even when he um is in the in the cleft of the mountain and then he, he's able to endure through the, the fire and the winds and, and, and all these things, then he, he discerns the still small voice and says he wrapped his face with his mantle. And is that not the same mantle that he put on Elisha? There's wow. a greater work for him to continue to do. And a lot of times, I know this has been the case for me where I felt like, where I felt like, 
truly I've done enough. Am I not greater than my fathers? At this point, have I not done better than, than my fathers? I have more kids than my father has. I've been married longer than my father has, so is truly I'm done, right? But even still, there are greater works for us to do, and we got to continue going in the strength of the 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 inheritance given to us by the Malak Yahua, by Yahusha Hamashiach. But yeah, that was a, uh, I think that was a really good point you just brought up there. Um, how, because I think we can all see ourselves in this where even after Yahuwah's been faithful to us, we can still find ourselves afraid, shook up, traumatized. Man. But Yahuwah didn't give us a spirit of fear, but of power and a sound mind. Hallelujah. 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 Man, that's an excellent point. Uh Agi Yosef, it's always a, it's always a, a blessing when you come through and you always bring bring forth some great jewels. Um all praises to the most high. I, I greatly appreciate that. And you know, the thing about it, it made me think about Moshe. Uh you know, what happened with Moshe or Moses, uh is is what they would call him in English. Uh Moses had fled from Egypt, y'all. He fled from Egypt because he killed the dude, you know, trying to save his people. He killed that dude that was beating on the Israelites. He killed the Egyptian and made him flee because Pharaoh was after him, right? He had to flee. He ended up dwelling in the wilderness. And he probably thought he was done. He probably thought that was probably it for him. He ended up raising him up with family, found him a wife, tried to settle down in the wilderness. You know, and thought he probably had him a pretty good, good life, you know, outside of Egypt, living a lot more simpler in Midian, in the in the wilderness or the desert. And next thing you know, the Most High comes at him in a burning bush while he is 80 years old, y'all. You, you know, most people at 80, you don't, you don't, even back then, you, you, you kind of trying to wrap it up for your life. You kind of done, you know, you, you think you kind of done. Now, y'all, the Most High came and called Moshe out to, to, to free the children of Israel when he was 80 years old. And what was Mo, why do you think Mo, what was Moshe's response, man? Uh, no, nah, why me? You know, I don't want to do this. I'm not, you know. He, he tried to come with it with every excuse, you know. And the Most High was like, nope. As a matter of fact, it was one excuse uh, Moshe came with. It said the Most High was actually getting. It, it implied the scriptures implied the Most High was getting kind of mad at Adam. You know, like, look, man, you, you gonna do it? I got Aaron. Okay, you can't speak well. Well, I got Aaron. He'll speak for you. Oh, you can't do this? Oh, well, I got something for that, too. Every excuse he tried to come with, the Most High some, has something for that. And so it just reminded me of that as well. Great point. Great point. I'll, all right. So we got area code 608. Shalom, shalom. Shalom, shalom. How are you? Um, I, I was thinking, um, you know, like Brother Yosef said, you know, it's not by 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 might, you know, and it's not by strength either, um, but it's by the Ruach of, of Yahuwah um, that, um, you know, will do whatever exploits he allows us to do in the time that he allows us to do them. So, you know, when Elijah was, was, was running, you know, we can only do whatever our Elohim allows us to do in the amount of time that he gives us to do it, you know, so yeah. that's, that's just what, what I was thinking, you know, because when the Ruach is on you, you feel it, you know, you know how to move, you know how to operate and you know, Yahoo is going to give you what to say. He's going to give you what to do and he's going to manifest it. All right. But there comes a point, there comes a point where, you know, and again, agreeing with Yosef, we shouldn't limit our Elohim to what he can do for us um, as we press forward. But, you know, maybe, you know, he, he felt and he knew that, you know, hey, it's, 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 it's about, you know, it's about that time, you know. That's all I was mm -hmm. thinking. Um, you know, that's, that's it, brothers. No, that's good stuff, Art. Most definitely, most definitely. And yeah, that was a that was a great observation that Yosef made that uh, about how, yeah, it seemed like he just he was he was like, man, that's enough, you know. Like I, I think I think that's it. That's it. Can we please just? I'm ready. To, I'm just ready to die. Like it, mm. it's it's deep. And I, I I used to hear a lot of commentaries from from Christians, and they'll talk about how he was depressed and 
depression in the scriptures and things like that. And I, I just don't know. I think maybe um, he definitely was on his la at his, you know, at his last, maybe at a low point, you could say, uh, depression. I don't, I don't know about that. I will question that. I just think um, he felt like his his work was done and he was ready, you know. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if I may say one thing, one other thing I've been thinking lately, because you, you reach a certain point and you think about what Hamashiach says, something to the effect that maybe you guys can help me out. Um, he that will lose his life will gain his life, you know, and he that will gain his life will lose his life. You know, I'm, I'm at a point, unfortunately, but Fortunately, you know, it's, it's, it's a weird, you know, duality um, where it's like, OK, yeah, you know, all of this is happening and all of this is not here that I'm, I, I need or whatnot. So all I can really do right now is lay down my life, you know, um, and according to scripture, you know, and that's that's what the gospel sake. You know what I'm saying? It's like, all right, I give myself up allow you to do your work. So I'll humble myself. You know, I'll like, you know, I'll deny myself and it's uncomfortable, but the promise of a reward in the end is there if we do so. And sometimes you get a little weary, you know, but I think that's when the Mitch Pakar comes in and, you know, we can try to encourage one another to, to keep on pressing on. That's it, brother. Man. Time. That's good stuff. That's good stuff. Um, and it, you're right. And I think that goes back to the theme of the, what I think uh, a, a, you can even say that's a strong theme of this entire passage we read today is about, is about dying to oneself or, or what are you going to give up, you know, for the most high. Again, as I mentioned, Elisha was most likely a wealthy dude. He had 12 oxen, his son of Shaphat. Um, there's, there's a school of thought that Shaphat was probably a wealthy landowner. Um, and Elijah, with him killing the oxen and giving it away to follow, and then following Elijah was, was, was showing that he was willing to give all of that up for the most high. Um, I think that's, that's something that we all have to come to terms with. When you read the Brit Hadashah, what do you think? All of the, all of the apostles, the Shalakim, what uh, 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 Josh called them, the Shalakim, the called out ones, um, Peter, when, when they were fishing, what happened? The Hamashiach came to them, and they gave up everything and were ready to run and follow follow Hamashiach. They gave the, the apostles gave up everything for the Most High for this truth, and I think that's something we all have to come to terms with. I think a lot of us are going to be faced if we haven't already uh, are going to be faced with having to give up a lot for this truth. But like I just brought out just now. Um, you know, you know that there's a reward for that. There's a reward coming for that. So, anyway, let's keep going. I got uh, area. I think that's uh, oh, Shay. Shalom, shalom. Uh, go ahead. Uh, Shay, are you there? Shalom, Shalom, Shalom. Might be on mute. Gotcha. Shalom, King. Shalom, family. Um, we had a lot of key points. Um, one point that stood out to me. Oh well, yeah, brought it out about how uh, just the. Uh, pursued uh, Elijah and I was just thinking I'm like after seeing your prophet slain and knowing that Elohim is with him you still went after this man and I'm like you have to be wicked or have a delusional mind or just really messed up or have a real eager towards trying to kill him um, and it just shows uh, shows us how um, how evil People can be even when they know who is with you. That it's not about just you, but I know that you are tied to an Elohim. I remember uh, seeing, um, just watching a clip from uh, Benaiah Israel talking about uh, how the Babylonians, or was the Persian one of those two, they used to uh, go over and conquer lands and things like that. And how they knew that. Uh, Yahuwah was the Elohim of Israel. So they knew if they conquered Israel, it was more so they conquered Yahuwah. So it was their uh, duty to do these things. So to to see even the same mindset that 
um, they knew, uh, Jezebel knew that uh, Yahuwah was with, was with Elisha and seeing the things that he did to their prophets, she still pursued that. And it was like, and it kind of, yeah. um, it kind of yeah. reminds me even, it kind of even reminds me uh, even with uh, our people who was in Egypt and how well, Yahuwah reigned on his people. And I mean, rain. I mean, did plays after plays, and then set his people free. Cause they was like, you know what, go leave. And then that 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 anger stirred him up so much he pursued the nation, and and he, and he kept on. So even though uh, us as being a people, it don't matter. Uh, even in the land of our captivity, those people that are wicked that are all around us. Uh, no matter what, if they're wicked, they're gonna still try to pursue you. So it's under Elo, it's only under yeah. Yahuwah's covering that we'll be protected. You know, it's like like we all been saying, it's not by our might, it's by His might. So even if they know that He's with us, that's not still good enough for them. It's for us. It's not really for them. It's never about them. It's always about us and our security uh, to the covenant and understanding of what Yahuwah is doing. So. Um, that was the main point about uh, you know just Jezebel just just kept on pursuing him. I, I was just pure uh, witch, uh, wicked. Uh, another point uh, we brought out how uh, Elisha was um, plow, uh, plowing twelve yokes of oxen, and uh, we know that a lot of times we see the number twelve. It kind of represents the uh, nation of Israel, and especially when you. See, you know, the oxen, the Aleph, you know, they was really a strong leader. So that's why I really thought about Israel. Uh, but what, what got me was um, when I thought about it, how Yahuwah already told Elisha, hey, he's going to be the one uh, that we're going to anoint. And he's going to take on, uh, take over your mantle or whatnot. It was already um, prophesied. He was already foretold. And it kind of reminded me exactly what uh, King Dawid, uh, when uh, prof the prophet Samuel went to Dawid, and he was looking for somebody. And guess what Dawi was doing? He was out in the fields being a shepherd. And mm. the, the a, a par, a paralyzed to even Dawi into this. Like the, the brother was out there doing the work with 12 oxen. So a lot of times, Yahoo has already trained them. Uh, I mean, not trained them, but physically, they have the traits of these, these roles, these mantles that they're about to uh, take forth. You know, um, so it just, it's crazy how every time these um, powerful people are being anointed, they're always, uh, they're always called when they are actually doing the work in the field, you know, uh, so uh, that's why I was bringing wow. it in. That's powerful. Oh, yeah. I, that is powerful. I love it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah, so uh, that's, a, that's a great observation. It seems like uh, many times they're, they're working in the field. Uh, when they're called out, and um, it was even like that with King Saul. It's interesting when uh, when uh, the prophet Samuel, even when he anointed king, went to go and choose King Saul as king. Uh, Saul was out in the field. Same thing with David, King Dawid. He was out in the field tending the flock, and uh, I believe there's some other um, examples as well. So that's a very interesting observation uh, that does seem to be very consistent. So a uh, great, great point. All right, we got uh, area code three one eight. Shalom, shalom. Shalom, this is Kathy. Uh, you asked the question about uh, Elijah running from Jezebel after doing all of these awesome works that he had done and so on and so forth. And what came to mind with me was our Hamashiach. Because now nobody has done as many miracles as he has done. But yet, when it came mm -hmm. up time for him to be offered up, he went into the garden of Gethsemane, and he cried and asked the Most High Yah, "If the cup be, uh, if it's possible, let that cup be, uh, you know, let the cup pass from him. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, not his will, not my will, but your will be done." Will be and done. so mm -hmm. I was thinking about um, the Hamashiach, and the Scripture says that he he prayed and 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 cried out to the Most High Yah until his sweat turned like great drops of blood. And he was troubled in his ruach concerning that, you know, but he knew what his task was before him. So after all that he had done up in, to that point in his life, 
having been knowing he was going to be betrayed and having his own brothers them thinking that you know making it uh seem to the people that he was out of his mind so to speak you know and so much so many people that didn't believe what he was what he was all about and so on and so forth yet they saw him feed the thousands they saw him raise the dead they saw him open blinded eyes they saw him walk on water they had witnessed all this stuff and all these things that his father empowered him to do. And the scripture said that he had to walk without measure. Now, Elijah had it, mm. but he had it with measure. But the Hamashiach mm-hmm. had it without measure. He had been through the wilderness, tempted of Hasatan for 40 days and 40 nights, and still came out emerging, uh, telling Hasatan, uh, get thee behind me. Man should not live by bread alone, and the, and the Malachians or the angels came and ministered to our So uh, that's what I thought about uh, when you were saying that. It wasn't that um, the Hamashiach knew that his task was to go the way of their tree, but yet he was troubled. And I believe that after most, uh, many, of, uh, uh, many of y'all's people have having put in countless hours and times and sweat and all of these things that they may come to that point at certain times when it seems as though, you know, Father, okay, I had enough. You know, I mean, I have, I don't have the strength to go on any further. But just as with Elijah, the angels came and fed him, and he went in the strength of bread for another 40 days until he came to the mountain. And here is our Hamashiach. The father had to come. He had to be ministered to in that garden to be able to get up, to go on, to go the way of that tree for our redemption, for our remission of our sins, for our reconciliation, and for our restoration and mm-hmm. nation. And that was my take on it. All right. All right. I'm with that. I'm with that, Cody. I appreciate that. That's a great observation. And uh, that's, uh, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, so this is a verse that came up to my mind based on what you just mentioned here. So. Let's uh, let's do a let's uh, correlate this with what you just mentioned in um, chapter I mean chapter nineteen verse seven in First Kings it says, and the angel of Yahuwah came back the second time and touched him and said, arise and eat because the journey is too great for you verse eight. So he arose and ate and drank and he went in the strength of that food, forty days and forty nights. And so basically uh, what you can what you can say here is that ain't why well, when 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 Elijah was was weakened, an angel came and was uh, strengthened him. When Elijah was basically at a low point that you can call it or whatever you want to call it, the angel came to strengthen him. And he was good, so strong that he was able to move for 40 days and 40 nights all the way down from Israel to uh, basically what they would call Mount Sinai, which is literally uh, about a couple hundred miles away from where he was, roughly 150 miles away. Now, let's compare this to Yeshua. Uh, this is what uh, uh, Cody was bringing out, great point. Uh, in the Garden of Gethsemane, it says in verse, uh, this is in chapter uh, Luke chapter 22, and I'm going to read verse 41. It says, uh, this is Yeshua. And he was withdrawn from them about a stone's throw, and he knelt down and prayed, saying, Father, if it is your will, take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. Then verse 43, then an angel appeared to him from heaven strengthening him and we know the rest of the story um so that is very interesting how how that happened and uh i, I think you can kind of correlate those two together all right so we have a uh, area code 909 shalom 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 this is martha anna yes um that was beautiful what she brought out and sometimes what i wanted to add is that sometimes when we get to our lowest, sometimes it seems like, you know, Elijah had uh, performed uh, and and he he brought God to them. He showed the people who Yahuwah was. And you have to have strength and you have to have the anointing. You have to have the power to do that such a thing. But he had gotten mm-hmm. down to where he he felt like he had no hope. I'm a, one moment you're doing all this, you're anointed, but then all of a sudden you're dry, 
and you feel like you, all hope is gone. And so sometimes uh, when we get down like that, thank God, thank you, who are that? He sent the angels because that's exactly what he do. He will do for us. Uh, when we get down, when we feel like we're lost, when we feel like there's no hope, he sends the anointing. He'll send a word. He'll send someone to you to uh, restore you and give you hope. And then, and then you begin to uh, start thanking Yahuwah for all that he has done, you know, in the past. Mm-hmm. You. you remember, you begin to remember everything that he's done for you. I remember uh, uh, certain situations. Uh, I had surgery on my hands. I had carpal tunnel so bad. I had surgery. And after the surgery, I, de- I developed a dystrophy to where it left me uh, um, handicapped, where I can't even open the door. And I remember wow. asking the re- uh, rehabilitation person, I, the, I asked her, I said, how long is this going to last? And she told me, well, it could last a month or it could be three to five years. We don't know. And I, it shocked me, and I began to cry right there in the, um, in the room there with her. And I went home, and I asked the Lord, how long am I going to have to deal with this? And I immediately went to sleep and went into a, a dream. Um, and he showed me, he showed me, he threw down some, uh, letters because I worked at the post office. He threw the letters down and he said, now read it. And I couldn't read it. It was gibber. It was gibber. I couldn't read it. And I said, I can't read this. And he said, he just looked at me like, you know, you pitiful person. <laughs> he said, mm. I'm going to heal you. And I got real happy and I began to rejoice. And so he threw the letters down again. And he said, now read this. And it was like a, a, a clove, uh, a golden um, uh, four-leaf clover in a sense like that. And inscribed in the four-leaf clover of gold was, through all your sorrow, I am there. And I began to rejoice to where I was in another place. I, I woke up and I was like, hi. It's like I was really in the face of the Lord. I was there with him. So he always comes when we need him most. He's always there. He said, I'll never leave you, nor will I forsake you, never. So that's all I wanted to say uh-huh. to you all. Yes. Wow, that's you powerful. All. That's powerful. Uh, praise to the Most High. Uh, praise to Yahuwah. Yeah, that's powerful, Cody. Uh, and it's good to hear from you. Hope to uh, hear from you more. If there's anything else comes up, just dial star six again, okay? All right. So we also have um, Ak. Uh, I think that's Ak Yosef. Shalom, shalom. Ak, you go ahead. Shalom, shalom. Um, yeah, I appreciate the opportunity to uh, hop back on, man. I um, I did want to just kind of touch on that whole, uh, that mantle one more time. Um, Mm. I think it's important to recognize that, um, that mantle represents, um, of course it represents a mantle, but like an anointing or something that, um, that, that is passed along from generation to generation. But it's also, I think, important to understand that that mantle is a testimony. That testimony is what's going to sustain or even, increase to a double portion the next generation so when we look at moshe and what he did um yahuwah didn't save the whole assembly out of misraim and take them through the wilderness and into the kingdom he saved moshe because when it came down for them to meet with, with yahuwah the the thunder and the fire and all that stuff, all these things that we just saw with Eliyahu, all these things that didn't 
that didn't um, shake him, it took our ancestors. And so they couldn't go up to the mountain. And therefore, they couldn't mm. deal with Yahuwah face to face. They needed a testimony. You see, Elisa wasn't there in the cleft on the mountain. So how does Yahuwah deal with him as somebody who deals with Yahuwah face to face? Because he carries that testimony. So our ancestors were able to go through the wilderness and eat manna and receive a Torah and receive judgment, all this by the testimony. Because Moshe just went up and, and even into the, the, the tent and even Aharon and the high priest, they would go into the tent and they would receive a testimony. They would deal with Yahuwah. And then they would go out and share that testimony with the brethren. And that testimony would sustain the brethren. Just like the testimony of the mantle sustained Elisha. Because mm. he wrapped that same te- he wrapped that same mantle around his face when he met with Yahuwah. And then even it, you know, we we I think we all know what happens with um Elisha and Eliyahu, that Eliyahu gets taken up and he says, If you see me go up, then these things will be to you when he asked for a double portion of the Ruach that was on him. So he's saying, if you can partake in this testimony, then these things will be for you. All throughout these scriptures, we see that there's a testimony that sustains people. Because blessed is he who believes and has not seen. So one who can believe the testimony will receive a double portion. When we think about the what Yahushua did with the 12, he gave them a testimony. He only saved 12 folks. He didn't die on a stake for, for everybody. But that same testimony is what sustains us. Because when it was time during Shabuot, again, when it was time to meet with Yahuwah, who could go up to the upper room to meet with him besides those who could bear the testimony? And then yeah. they received power. They received the sign of the tongue. The fire descended down on them. And then they went out to the assembly and shared the testimony, and then it could go on to them. So if a greater thing was given to them than they saw in Mashiach, then how much more would a greater thing be given to us who has partaken in their testimony? Because all these years, we have been sustained off of the testimony of the Shalakim. King. Even to this day, the fruits yeah. that are coming out, yeah. these assemblies that are popping up, the, the truth that's being uh, revealed, the books are open. We're, we're able to read with understanding. We were reading with, through like, like a, a dark glass dimly, but now everything is becoming clearer and clearer and clearer because we've partaken in the testimony. We don't know Yahushua after the flesh. We know him after the Ruach because it was given by a testimony. Mm. And we see that happening right here in this scripture, in this account of Elahu being able to go up in the mountain and then receive a testimony and then share that with the brethren that he receives double. That's seed time of harvest because it's just one seed that goes in the ground. But from that one seed, you get a tree that bears many fruit. Each fruit with many seeds. He just, he, some of us have to be the seed that's willing to be broken. And, and we even see, like you had brought out, and you had said that um, a lot of people try to say that Eliyahu was depressed. He wasn't depressed. He was just willing to die. He just didn't know what else he had left in him. He was just willing yeah. to go. You know what I'm saying? So it's, because he was willing to, to give all that he had, Yahuwah even gave him a little bit extra. And then he was able to even give double that to Elisha because of his faithfulness. Because we see he responded right away. As soon as he seen him, it doesn't even say how he discerned that that was the man of Elohim. It just says that he, he was out doing work, that he put the thing on him. So Yahuwah had already been dealing with him. Yahuwah is already preparing the Eliyahu's for the Elisha's and the Elisha's for the Eliyahu's. He's already doing it. If you can endure yep. and keep doing the work. If you can partake in the testimony. 
many of us have, have seen the word made flesh in our own lives. We've seen something that can't be seen. You know, in a, a couple of chapters ago, we saw that Eliyahu was looking out and he was telling them that the rain was coming. And he said, look, there it is. And they said they can't see it. They couldn't partake in the testimony. And so there was nothing but judgment for them. But for those of us who can partake in the testimony, we will awake and then there will be a meal prepared. And there will be a voice, the Malachi Hua, telling us to rise and eat. Because there's even a greater thing for us to do because we were able to partake in the testimony. Hallelujah. Yeah, that's what I, that's what I got. I just want to share that. That that mantle is important. And that mantle, I think we get caught up in mantles a lot. But what we need to do is recognize the testimony. And that's it. Kind, kind. All praise to the Most High. No, that's good. Yeah, yeah, I'm with you on that. I'm with you on that. That's that's very good points. And so um, what I'm going to do, we still have two more callers. Um, I do have something I wanted to say, but you know what? I'm not going to say anything because I want to catch get y'all before we close. So what I want y'all to do is um, uh, we have two more callers. If you all could please try to keep it under probably under a minute because uh, we try to uh, we try to end at, at right at nine. But we re I really want to want to get y'all in. I know uh, that y'all been waiting. So uh, we're going to start with area code 832. Shalom, shalom. Go ahead. Shalom, shalom. Uh, wisdom, Houston, Texas. Um, I just wanted to talk on um, a part of what the brother was just speaking about as far well as testimonies and also in chapter four, where um, he was stating that he requested himself he might die. And I think that comes from, you know, like you said, it, it wasn't maybe not necessarily depression, but just weariness, being tired. And wanting yeah. to wanting to give up and not fight the fight, and also to go back um, to what another brother said, uh, where we can't put limitations on what Elohim wants or per has already prepared for us to do because He already knows the fight we have in us. It's just that we don't know it, and we mm. we prepare ourselves to give up before we even begin the fight, you know, and we already have testimonies, but a lot of times we give up before we go through the testimonies that can probably proceed to help the ones that come after us or that is in the walk alongside of us, if it makes sense. Oh, yeah. That makes sense, Cody. That's good stuff. Yes, and that, that's all I wanted to, to speak on. Cody, Cody, that's good. I'm glad you was able to uh, bring that forth. Um, hope to see you on again. Uh, we have Most also our Carter. Kind of, Cody. Shalom, shalom. And then we got our card. But go ahead, Aki, and then we'll close with prayer after that. All right, I'll keep it short. Honestly, uh, I first started sick, and Yosef ended up saying exactly what I was thinking about the testimony. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, Israel as a nation itself is a testimony. When you look at the Jewish people, just because of the Holocaust, like their numbers are very slim. They're like, in, in comparison to other nations, they're a very, very small group of people. But us, 400 years of slavery and lynchings and, and Jim Crow, and we still continue to flourish. And it's all by the will of the Most High that this happens. Not only that, but each of us, and I'm sure, is a walking, talking testimony individually. People look at, I know me, and they see how, how I used to be. And now they look and like, what is this? How did this happen? Is that... Like Elijah, Elijah, man, that double portion. He told him to rise and eat twice. That was that double portion. That's that that man, a man who, what is this? What's going on? Those who can see that light want to be a part of it, and those who can't determine that testimony just think it's crazy. That's all I got out. Hmm. Huh. That's real talk. That is real talk. Uh, man, y'all, that was a powerful midrash, man. All praises to Yahuwah. Powerful word, y'all. Um. 
you know, um, and just another thought, uh, maybe Elisha knew, knew who, um, Elijah was. Maybe he already knew who he was because Elijah, especially after that showdown between him and the prophets of Baal, um, he was very famous in Israel. So maybe that's a possibility as well. That's just a thought I was thinking of when y'all were saying what y'all were saying. So let's see, let's see who we're going to close, who's going to close us off with, with prayer. Um, Let's see, let's see. Can we get uh Ak Dawood, Ak Dave? Um, is it possible for you to close us off in prayer? Ak, uh, if not, it's, it's perfectly fine. But uh, would you be able to do that? You might be on mute. I just unmuted you. Okay. Yeah, man. I kept going in and out of mute. <laughs> uh, yeah, absolutely. I can close it out. All right. Much appreciated. Okay. So I'm going to open up the floor. Does anybody have any prayer requests? Uh, dial star six. If there is any prayer requests that you would like us to cover in the closing prayer. Any prayer requests? Dial star six. We got uh, area code three one eight. Yes, for my grandson who who uh is diagnosed with sickle cell and thalassemia. So every time he has a fever or something, he usually ends up having to go in the hospital, whether he need to or not. That's just one of the precautions that they do. And right now he has uh gotten the B uh strand of the flu and that they uh diagnosed him with last night and they really want him to come over to street court, come into the hospital, but the little boy's doing fine. And I just want you guys to pray for him. And, uh, and I usually just like, like to say the diagnosis. I don't even like really calling out what they even diagnosed him with. But uh, that that fever is abated in the name of Yahushua HaMashiach and that we don't have to end up in nobody's hospital. Yeah, most definitely. Uh, all right. Y'all prayers. Oh yeah, that's 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 what it's all about. Any other prayer requests? Any other prayer requests? Uh, Dow Star Six. If any other requests, I'll give it about maybe five more seconds. Feel free to bring your. Uh, We got uh, Ma'ak, Ma'ak Jarvis. Shalom, shalom. Aki, go ahead. Shalom, shalom, family. So I was just going to ask if you could just pray for our uh, direction and, you know, some coverage as we start making plans to relocate. So we just need some clarity and some direction. <laughs> Most definitely, Akoli, most definitely. Um, you already know we got you on that. We'll definitely keep you out in prayer. Ta-da. Yeah, no problem at all. All right, we have area code 443. Yeah, shalom, family. Um, this is Anisi. I just wanted us to pray for um, the single mothers out here. Um, if we, if Yahuwah can just allow us to have our eyes open as well, looking over their children and just being um, open hearted to them. But I just feel like um, I see so many young women um, that are single with children and just allowing, you know, like men um, to come into their homes and molest their children or their children are going missing and being hurt. And I just want us to really. Um, you know, pray for them. Yes, y'all. Hallelujah. Most definitely. Yeah, Hallelujah. for real. Uh, Hallelujah. All right. And then um, we also have uh, Moray in the chat. He is asking for prayer for marriages as well. So that's the most definitely. Need to include that in there. Prayer for marriages. Thank you. Uh, let's see. Anybody else? Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, can you hear me? Yep, go ahead. Yep. Um, well, as you were asking for prayer requests, we just got a text on my wife's phone. 
Kahim, that's in our Mishpaka, his grandma's in the in the hospital and they're asking for prayers for her. Say that one more time. Oh, um, our, our Kahim and our Mishpaka, his grandmother's in the hospital and they're asking for prayer for her. Oh, man. Okay. Most definitely. All right. We also have another prayer request from the chat from Moray. Uh, prayer for uh, people dealing with the spirit of lust. Most definitely. Prayer for people dealing with the spirit of lust. They be delivered, most definitely. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, Yahuwah. Thank you, Father, Yah. Oh, pray for me. Shalom. Shalom. All right. It's Raquel. Go ahead. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I just want to do prayer for discernment and um, understanding and guidance. Um, uh, direction and pray that he continue to all our steps. He said, "Prayer for understanding and direction." And yeah, and guidance, and that he continues to all our steps. <laughs> Most definitely. Hallelujah. Connor, Cody, that's that's good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right, we also have uh, a prayer request for uh, Cody Lisa for her brother, Gerald. He's 52 years old and spent the majority of his life in and out of prison, running from Yah. Uh, her prayer is that he wakes up. Man, okay. most definitely. Yes, yes, thank you, Father. Thank you, Yahuwah. Praise and bless you, Father. All praise it to the Most High Yah. Thank you, Yahuwah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Yahuwah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We also have a prayer request for Cody Sherry for healing in her body and the awakening of her family. Yes, thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to the Most High Yah. All praises to Yahuwah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. We also have prayer from Akodi Mayala, uh, praying for our pregnant women. Since in this yes. country, we have a high mortality rate and pray for the babies. Man, for real. Yes, yes. Man. I'm telling you. I said that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think I God pray for that this morning. I pray for that this morning. I did it. I yeah, we be praying for that almost every time. That's a good one. Mm-hmm. Um, we got a uh, Cody Martha. She has a prayer for her son Emmanuel in the state hospital. Man, mm-hmm. okay, most definitely. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We also have a prayer request for a Cody Vivian. Uh, no, never mind. Uh, for um, a Cody Kishaya. She says, "Can you pray for me to come of this um, dialysis, heal my kidneys, and wake my son and daughters?" Hallelujah! I think I think she's referring to dialysis. Yeah. Pray for me to come of this dialysis, I believe. So we'll just pray for healing for Cody. Uh, healing for her kidneys. Uh, Cody Kishaya. We also have a um, prayer request from a Cody Gilea. Shalom, Cody. Prayer for her boys to find jobs and to walk in this truth.
All right, and um, prayer request from Cody CC. Prayer for our families, especially Hebrew brothers who can lead, starting with my brother-in-law. Hallelujah. We have a prayer request for mental illness as well. Mental illness among us, good. All right, y'all. So let's go ahead and um, come before the Most High, and we're going to cover all these requests. Um, uh, we got them. So uh, I'm gonna. What I'm gonna do? I'm gonna unmute everybody. Uh, if you have a loud background, I may mute you back. But it's all participants are now unmuted. And um, uh, Dave, if you can go ahead and uh, get us going, that'll be perfect. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank of Thank you. Thank the Thank of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. Thank you, you are the Holy One of Yisrael. You are our Elohim, and we are your people. And your people are calling upon you now from in the land of this captivity. For you said that if we turn from our sins, if we remember ourselves, we could think ourselves, and we turn and pray and pray and pray towards where your temple was, that you would hear yes, us. Your people who are called by your name shall humble themselves and pray and seek after you and turn from our wicked ways that you would hear from heaven and that you would heal our land. Yahweh, your children, yes, I'll find Lord. out for you in this day, in this, in this light, in this night. In the midst of this captivity, we cry out to you. Because of what this nation has done to us. So they have taken our young men. They have placed them aside. They have placed them in prison. They have made them sick through shots, through medical care. Um, yes. They have they have tried to destroy us, you And we live on with disease. And we live on with, with uh, sickness in our bodies because of what the enemy has done. But are you not mightier than that, God? For all things are under your hand, for the earth is your footstool, and its inhabitants as the ant of the field. So, Father, we look to your your hand, we look to your guidance, we look to you for our direction. But we are making yes, sure that yes, 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 your Holy Spirit will lead us, that it will guide us, that it will instruct us. As we walk this narrow path, let us not go to the left, nor let us go to the right. Father, the path that you want us to walk, open the door, Yah, so that we know it is you. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Open the door that yes, we may Lord. walk through it Lord. with faith, Father. Not knowing and not seeing all that we think we should see, but trusting in you and reward our faith that you have never left us. You will never leave us. You will never forsake us. For you know our ancestors as well as you know us now, Father. Your hand is upon us and you are waking up your children. So we pray for your guidance and we pray for your understanding. We pray for your healing, your Ruah Rafa, our healers. We pray for your healing for healing is the children's bread. Yeah, I pray that you will fill it. I pray that you will fill our bones. I pray that you will heal our sickness, our muscles, heal our eyes, yeah, heal our blood. Yes. Yeah, try to poison us, but heal our blood. And rebuke the doctors that will come against your children. For those of us who are walking in your statutes and walking in your commandments, this is all right according to the covenant, God. So we speak those things, Father. Yes, you are yes. waiting on us to walk those in what you have told us to walk in. God. Declare these things. So we speak things over the people of Israel. We speak healing over all those who are keeping your laws and keeping your statutes. We speak healing, Father, over those who we are interceding for. We pray that they will hear us, and we pray that they will turn their ears to you, that they will turn from their sins, Father. If you are not to heal their bodies, then heal their souls. 
for the bodies to perish because the spirits are strong, they can live on forever. So we pray that you will heal them in their inward man and may it manifest themselves on its outward man, God. We lift up the pregnant women that we have, including my coach, God. We pray that yes, you will yes, 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 as you used to do in the day. That's the fruit of the womb, Yahuwah. Yes. the children without error and without complication. So that they may go through the hand of the most high Elohim. For the Elohim of Yashrael lives and he does not sleep and he hears. But we do not have an Elohim who we cry out to and we it does not answer. But you hear your people, Yah. You hear your people. So Father, I pray that you will bless those who are pregnant, bless the fruit of the womb. But this is our this is our rightful service to you, Yah. You told us to be fruitful and to multiply for our children to like you, so that Yashrael shall be mighty and greater than all the other nations. So bring forth the children, Father, with power and with might, with healing. Yeah. We know they seek to destroy our youth, destroy our seed. But you are mightier than you. Find the ways of the enemy. So how the man walks out of the wrong time, seeking whom he made the vow. And you told us to resist him, standing firm, and he will flee from us. So, Father, we pray that we will be able to resist, that we will be able to up, the upstanding, upstanding men, upstanding women, um, yes. upstanding children. Yes. Father, I want to pray for the moms who are raising kids by themselves. Yes. Pray for yes. the fathers, for these are yes. near to your heart. Yes. God, you said in your word, you said in your Torah, that if one was to harm the father or the widow, that you would make that man father. And you will make that man a widow. You will make his children father. So, Father, this is your covenant. So I pray for the children who are without fathers, the moms that are raising their children without fathers, that you will place a hedge of protection around their mind and around their heart. Do not allow them to bring them into the house that will harm their seed, Father. But this is a part of the curse. This is not your will. So, yeah, I pray that your will will be done. I pray that you will hear from above, here on heaven, for our words do not need to be many, because you know the hearts of all men. We trust in your yes, path, Father. and we walk through it. We trust in your Torah, for it is a light to our life. It is, a, it is our salvation. So we trust. Father, give us grace and give us mercy as we go about our night. Bahashim Yahushua HaMashiach. In the name of Yahusha, we pray. And oh, one more thing, Father, we want to, with us. We want to um, bring mental illness to you. But we see what is happening on the spirit of And I pray, Father, that you will bind the evil ruler coat, the evil spirit that are causing yes, the mind mind lose. Yes. We, we pray that you will bind the evil ruler coat that are confusing men's minds. Yes. They name is right now. Yes, Father. I'm stronger than you, Father. You have given us dominion over them. So, Father, I pray you will give us, give us the glory in this situation, God, so that we may give it back to you. But give us the victory over them, God, that we may give it back to you. But this is our rightful place as heirs of the kingdom. We ask all these things in your name. We say hallelujah and let it be done according to your covenant. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Yeah. I lay me at your feet. I bring before you all that I have. I lay it at your feet. You are worthy, worthy, worthy. Yeah. You are worthy, worthy, worthy. Some. Praise like on 
For you I'll pour it out. For you I'll pour it out. I pour, I pour it out for you. Praise my God. For you I pour it out. For you I pour it out. I pour, I pour it out for you. I pour Hallelujah. the prayer in you, yeah. not to win them so the people are standing now. I pour the curse in you, because of your worthiness, and so I can hold you now. Because you are worthy, 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 yeah. You are worthy, worthy, worthy so. You are worthy, 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 yeah. You are worthy, worthy, worthy so. Praise like oil. For you are pouring out. For you are pouring out. I pour, I pour it out for you. Like oil. For you, I'll pour it out. For you, I'll pour it out. For you, I'll pour it out. I'll pour, I'll pour it out for you. It's so yeah. much fun. Yeah. Yeah. I'm looking before you. Like you're full of things. 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 Abba, asking for discernment and understanding and guidance, Abba. We pray that you continue to open our eyes to what you have set for us, Abba. We pray that you continue to come into our hearts and our minds and give us a clean heart, Abba, renewing us a right spirit, Abba. We pray that you wash away all our sins, Abba. We come before you asking that you continue to protect us and cover us, Abba. We come to you asking that you will continue to wake us up, Abba. Come before us, Abba, and help us understand that your way is the only way. We pray that you told us, Abba, not to lean to our own understanding. But we come to you asking that you will continue to open up our mind, Abba, to, to what you have set for our lives, Abba. We pray for visions and dreams and, and understanding of what our purpose is in our lives, Abba that serve you. We come to you asking that you continue to open up our hearts, Abba, to continue to wake up your Israelites, Abba, to continue to touch everybody's heart and mind, Abba, with your words coming from us, Abba. We pray that you continue to come to full us, Abba, and heal our heart, our minds, Abba. Anybody that has a bitter heart or, or has anger built up in them or something, Abba. We pray that you continue to show us what forgiveness is, Abba. We pray that in our hearts and our minds that we come to the, the conclusion that you are the only one. You are the way and the truth and the light. No one can enter in but through you. you are. We thank you so much for loving us and guiding and protecting us. We pray that you continue to help us, Abba. The Passover Pesach is coming up soon, Abba. We pray that our hearts and minds are ready, Abba, to receive you, Abba, in the correct way, Abba. We pray that you will continue to guide us, cleanse us out, Abba. We have to be the Israelites that we prepared, Abba. We have to be the, like the ten virgins that we prepared with them all in their lamps, Abba. We pray for that direction in our lives, Abba. Anything that's not like you that's in us, Abba, we cast it out, Abba. We pray that you remove it, Abba. We pray that whenever we come into anybody in our lives, Abba, that's trying to teach us something, we have to understand that that may be something coming from you that we may need to fix in our lives. I pray that you continue to come before us, Abba, and open up our minds. Help us to see dreams and, and understand the visions that you are presenting us with, Abba. We come before you asking that you continue to humble your people, Abba. We cannot do anything unless we are humble, Abba. Please humble our hearts and our minds, Abba. Because you are worthy, 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 worthy. Yeah. Yeah. Abba, hold us here.
He's here to praise the back. This is only the beginning of labor pains, Abba. You're showing us just the beginning. We pray for your guidance. We pray for obedience. We pray for your glory to be on our Hold us, Abba. Hallelujah. Open up uh, your mind and your uh, heart to your will. He's here. He's here listening to us now. If somebody on the line with a bitter heart, somebody that's been hurt so bad, he's here for you. He's telling you to release it. Release yeah. it now. He's here. He's here. He said, you're not going through the struggle yeah. alone. He said he brought you through everything. In, the, in that in your life that you have gone through, he says. So why wouldn't he bring you through this? He's here. He's here, he's guiding and protecting you. You think that it's the wrong way to go, but he's showing you the right way. He said, "Don't doubt him. Don't doubt him." He said, "You have to trust him. He is the way." Yes, Baba. Uh, yes. continue, to wake up your people. continue to wake up your people repent of your sins the time is growing short the time is growing short my people are still hard headed and stiff necked they're not waking up the work can be done more there's so much more we need to do before we can wake up as many people as he need us to wake up. We have to repent. We have to cleanse our own heart and mind. We need to stop holding things in. He's speaking to all of us. We have to repent. We have to let go. We have to forgive. We have to humble ourselves. We have to be obedient. When he say walk, you need to walk. We pray for discernment. We pray for continued understanding in his word. And when we hear his voice speak, he said two or three witnesses. Man, that's powerful, y'all. Man. Well, much how about everybody, y'all. Lila Tov and most high willing, we're going to do this again next week. But uh, Lila told Miss Parker. Lila The host has ended this call. Goodbye.
this perfume Cause of your worthiness As I behold you now Cause you are worthy, 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 Lord You are worthy, 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 so Foolishness, I know, but your foolishness is wiser than my wisest. Wiser, wiser. It's foolishness, I know, but your foolishness is wiser than my wisest. Wiser, wiser. It's foolishness, I know. But your foolishness is wiser than my wisest Wiser, wiser oh, you wiser, you wiser You wiser Cause you are worthy, 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 Lord Jesus, love has freed us. We pour out our hearts to you.